Hey friends, I'm Mel. I've got a confession to make. I've been hiding some really good recipes from you. I haven't done it on purpose. Every week I try to cram my videos full of just the best of the best. But every now and again, a really good recipe will fall through the cracks and not get the recognition that it deserves. But I'm here to come clean and you don't have to fear missing out ever again. Here are my top six recipes from last year that you probably missed. Let's start it out with a delicious summer appetizer. We're gonna go to Southwest Florida's Gulf Coast and have ourselves some beach bread. To make the beach bread, you want a loaf that's a little more crusty like a baguette. And it is just me and Patrick here tonight, so I'm gonna half this. You just want to split your loaf in half lengthwise. I'm gonna use about a tablespoon and a half of butter for each slice and I'm going to spread it out from end to end. You want to make sure your butter is nice and soft and this is a spreadable butter with canola oil but I still have had it sitting out here for a good long bit because you want to be able to spread it real easily. I'm going to give this a light sprinkle with some garlic powder. You could use regular garlic here if you wanted to and if you could only find the really soft French bread. At this point here, you would want to go ahead and stick this in the oven and get it toasted up, then move on to the next steps. Now, you're going to take some blue cheese dressing. Like I said, I am halving this recipe, so I'm only using half of a third of a cup. If you want to make an entire loaf, I'll have a link to this original recipe down in the description box. Blue cheese is one of those controversial dressings, either you love it or you hate it. And the writer of this recipe said, even if you don't like blue cheese dressing, she encourages you to try this with blue cheese. It just gives it an extra like depth of flavor and it really makes it good. But if you're dead set on not using blue cheese, you could definitely use a ranch dressing. The only dicing required is just a little bit of tomato, so I'm going to use one Roma. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of tomato on here. I mentioned it's just me and Patrick here, so I think I'll just put tomato on one, because y'all know he hates tomatoes. He will eat bell peppers. He especially likes the colored ones. And I had a little bit left up from earlier this week, so I'm just going to sprinkle that on. Looks like it'll give it the same look. Now, I'm going to put about half a cup of mozzarella cheese on each one of these. Let's give it just a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and let's sprinkle a little parsley on here. If you had fresh, that would be beautiful, but I'm just using dried. And we're going to put this in a 425 degree oven for 10 minutes. I let mine go about 13 minutes to get it nice toasted and brown on the top. Lots of oceanfront restaurants in the southwestern Gulf Coast of Florida serve this bread. It's just a really amped up cheesy bread and it is delicious. That tomato gave just a little bit of sweetness along with the deep like cheese and tartness. This one was good. This one was really, really good. The blue cheese. Use the blue cheese. This is precious. I love this little simple bread. If you've been a viewer for long, you've heard me talk about Blue Land and how much I'm enjoying using their eco-friendly, sustainable cleaning products. So I was really excited to get me two more of the refillable forever foaming hand soap dispensers. That way I can have one in each of the bathrooms and the kitchen sink. All you do is fill your forever bottle with warm to hot water up to the line, drop one of the tablets into the water and let it dissolve completely. Then put the nozzle back on. You're good to go. No shaking or stirring needed. With Blue Land, you only need to purchase tablets and refill tablets start at just $2.25. By purchasing your refills in bulk, you can save even more and you'll never run out of your most used and loved products. And best of all, Blue Land uses absolutely no single use plastic in any component from bottles to tablets, wrappers to shipping. And right now, Blue Land is celebrating its fifth birthday by bringing back customer favorites from the last five years, all in one collection. I've mentioned before how much I love the soft, light, 
fresh scents of all the Blue Land products and the birthday collection did not disappoint either. Of course, I wanted strawberry rhubarb in the kitchen. I chose jasmine moss with a hint of neroli for one of our bathrooms, and I thought Patrick would enjoy the woodsy musk of pretty earthy in his bathroom. Blue Land has a special offer just for my viewers. Click the link in the description below to receive 15% off your first kit. It's a great time to simplify your cleaning routine. Use the link below in the description box and you'll get 15% off your first Blue Land kit today. Thank you so much Blue Land for sponsoring today's video. We're going to start by mixing up a honey mustard marinade for some chicken breast. I'm going to serve it up on top of a salad. So this is also going to double as a salad dressing. This has such a warm fall vibe to me. I think this would also be great to just make your chicken and serve this over mashed potatoes too. We'll start with a third a cup of honey. We're gonna use three tablespoons of a whole grain mustard, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons of olive oil, and about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. We're also going to put in about a teaspoon of minced garlic and give this a nice stir. I went ahead and mixed up the entire recipe amount for this marinade. This is enough to do four chicken breasts. I'm only doing two, but I wanted to have a little bit extra of this. So if you're doing four chicken breasts, you're going to take half of this and marinate your chicken breast in it and then save the other half for dressing for a salad. Since I only have two chicken breasts, I'm just gonna take about a quarter cup of this marinade and I'm gonna let my chicken marinade for a couple hours. You could go overnight, you could go 30 or 40 minutes. I've got a little bit of bacon frying up over on the stove. While that's going on, I'm gonna start prepping my salad, starting with one part of romaine lettuce. And if you've been here long at all, you know I like to wash my lettuce thoroughly and I'm a big proponent of a salad spinner. That is the best way to get your lettuce good and dry and ensure that it stays fresh all week. I've got a giant red onion. I'm just gonna cut us up a little bit of this. I just want some real thin little slices. Got a little Roma tomato here. I'm just gonna cut it up real thin for myself. I've also got an avocado. I would like some slices of it on my salad. This one here today is very, very nice and ripe. Got my bacon nice and crispy back here cooling. Left my bacon grease in here, put my two marinated chicken breasts in. I'm just going to cook them up about four or five minutes on each side till they're nice and done. This chicken smelled so good when it was frying up. To be such a very simple marinade, this had so much good flavor. I will definitely be doing this again and maybe baking it up. I also think this would make a great marinade for pork loin or pork chops. I'll definitely be using this marinade on a lot of different things this fall. You know, I love to build a big O salad. I just love to pile it up with veggies and some of that good crisp crumbled up bacon. And I used some of the marinade I had reserved as a dressing for my salad. This is so good. If you love honey mustard, you've got to try this. It is not a tangy, overpowering, mustardy. It is so sweet and just so mild, but flavorful. This one is so good. Like I said, if you're a honey mustard lover, you've got to try this. Now I wanna share with you some cheeseburger party sliders. We love these. These start with one pound of ground beef that I'm just cooking up on top of the stove. And of course, I'm gonna drain the grease out of it. Then you wanna add in just a small diced onion. Wanna put in about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Gonna season this up with just a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm also gonna put in about a teaspoon of cumin. 
and about a half a teaspoon of paprika. Just want to combine all of that together and let it all get mixed in. And then I'm going to put in just a little bit of garlic. And cook that up just a few minutes again. Let all these flavors come together. And then I'm just going to kind of set this off the heat for a few minutes while we prepare the sauce for the top. I'm going to start with melting one stick of butter in a saucepan. I'm going to add in a couple big tablespoons of brown sugar. I went a little heavy on that for my husband. I'm also going to squirt in about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and another tablespoon of Dijon mustard. I'm just going to mix all this together and let it come up to a simmer and this makes a wonderful sticky savory sweet sauce that bakes into these sliders. Now we're going to assemble them and I'm using these Pepperidge Farm little mini buns and they already have the tops cut off of them which is perfect. So I'm just taking our meat mixture and spreading it as evenly as I can across these buns. If some goes down in between just kind of squish it back up on top of the buns there. And I'm using this onion garlic jam. This recipe actually called to add rotel into the meat mixture but I didn't want another Tex-Mex recipe. I wanted something that was more sweet and savory so you could definitely use a jelly like this or just caramelize your own onions. Then I used just some sliced cheddar cheese that I put over top of each bun. I'm going to put the tops back on them now and we're going to grab that sauce and I just slightly drizzled mine across all of it. You can definitely use a brush and brush this on. I did go back with my spoon and just kind of make sure I had some all over. And then we put just a little bit of sesame seeds on the top of this. And I do cover these with aluminum foil and I cooked them a total of about 25 minutes and I pulled that foil off right at the end. These are so very delicious. Now you could definitely do this with the Rotel. I know that would also be really, really good. But this was exactly what I had in my mind that I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be savory and sweet and something about that onion and garlic jam flavor down in there with that brown sugar topping that hit the spot with me that was so good you could definitely put your own twist on this you could get big mac sauce and pickles and totally make this big mac style you can make this your own with sloppy joes however you want to do it it's definitely a hearty filling snack could be used as your dinner as well I am actually making three different recipes today, but one of them I'm doubling. So the first thing I like to do if I'm doing a couple different recipes, I want to get all of my chopping out of the way. And I'm just making pretty big cuts out of these potatoes because they are going to be in the crock pot and you want them to hold up. I'm also going to be using some carrots today, but they're just baby carrots and I'm not going to do any chopping to them at all. My onion is going to do actually triple duty, <laughs> so I'm going to save this little portion right here and dice it for a recipe, and then these two pieces right here, I'm going to cut them in bigger chunks. We're going to make a slow cooker balsamic beef roast, and I'm using half of one of these little packets. This is some stuff that makes a uh, beef bouillon. I'm going to put one cup of hot water in with that. Just stir it around to dissolve. Those little packets make two cups, but I only needed a cup. And I just conveniently had used half of one before. I'm going to add in some minced garlic. I'm going to put in a third a cup of balsamic vinegar, a half a cup of red wine vinegar, and a fourth a cup of brown sugar. Okay. We'll set this aside. Look what I found. Chuck roast were on sale. When I buy a big chuck roast, it takes us a while to get through that. Sometimes it'll go to waste if I can't get all the leftovers used up. So when I found this package and it actually has two smaller roasts in it, I thought this was perfect for me. Gonna season this up with some pepper, 
and some salt on each side. The comment has been made to me before that I don't cook large enough amounts. Well, you know, I cook like what is good for my family and you should do the same. If you have a larger family, you can easily double or triple a recipe. But in my case, nowadays, I never know if it's just gonna be me and Patrick or three of us or six of us. I never know. <laughs> I bought these handy little guys on Amazon. They store flat. You can push these things in, fold these over, then they just open just like this. Then you just clip your bag right under there. You may have already seen these. If you don't have them, don't worry. You can always just take a pitcher. I used to do that all the time, like my tea pitcher, and I would put my bag in it. And if it didn't fit, I'd just clip it with some clothespins to the side. But I thought I would try these things out. I think I'm gonna go in with the roast first in each bag. Next, I'm just gonna take that onion, put them in each bag, break them apart a little bit, then the potatoes, and this balsamic, it is probably gonna turn these vegetables very dark, but you know what, I'm just taking a chance. I'm actually just taking a chance on this whole recipe. I've never made it before. How brave am I? Now I'm gonna take some of these baby carrots, put some of those in each bag. I've been eyeing this recipe for a bit, but I made some French dip sandwiches a while back and the recipe was really close to this and we loved it. Now I'm gonna take this sauce that we mixed up, all those liquids, and I'm dividing it evenly between each bag. I kind of felt like all my garlic was gonna to go to the bottom, so I just saved my spoon out and I will just put it in there like that. I could have made a different recipe out of one of these roasts, but you know, kind of the whole name of the game in doing freezer meals is to save you time. So if I'm prepping one thing, let's just double it. Now we're just gonna slide our little bag out of here, zip it up for safekeeping. We don't want any accidents. And now I'm just gonna squish all this around before I let the air out. Once you get it all incorporated, you want to really squeeze out as much air as you can. Now, as far as freezing my freezer meals, I like to lay my bags out on a cookie sheet and stick this right into my deep freezer until they're good and frozen. And you really don't want to layer too many of these on top of one another while they're freezing because you want to make sure that everything down in here has a chance to get nice and frozen. Now, once it's frozen solid, you can stack them up, you can put them up sideways, you can do them however you want to. But until everything gets frozen, I like to do them like this. It is about 9.30 in the morning. We've got a busy day. So... Spray in that crock pot with some nonstick spray. I am pulling out this balsamic roast. I can't remember exactly the name of it right off the top of my head. <laughs> we got some carrots and potatoes in here. This is still frozen. I just set it out in the sink for just a few minutes this morning. I am just gonna flip it over here, get the roast on the bottom. Get the potatoes up over the top of it some. Pop the top on it. And I'm gonna cook mine on high. And hopefully, if we wanna eat early at maybe three o'clock, something like that, this will probably be done. But the crock pot is forgiving enough that if I have to let it go longer, that's fine too. It has been about six hours. It is smelling delicious and looking delicious. I have the little bit of liquid, the au jus, whatever you want to call it, that was in the bottom of my crock pot in this saucepan coming up to a boil. And I'm gonna put a little more of this balsamic vinegar down in here. And I'm gonna let it reduce and hopefully make a glaze out of this. Now 
this is cooked perfectly tender. I did pull some of the fat, you know, out of it because it was a chuck roast. Let's give it a try. That is so good. Most of the time when I'm doing a chuck roast, I'm going to be making it with the brown gravy with all the packets. Oh, those potatoes are perfectly tender too. Mm. So this is really different. I love the balsamic vinegar taste in it. It's still very comforting and like home style, but it's got an elevation to the flavor and I just love it. Mm. The carrots and the potatoes have taken on that same flavor. They're not mushy at all. They're just perfect. This is Patrick's new favorite pot roast. He doesn't want me to make it with gravy anymore. I'm making a brand new chicken recipe, brand new to me. It is a lemon pepper panko fried chicken breast. We are going to give this a try. It sounded so good. Now we're going to mix up our breading for our chicken. I'm doing a cup of panko breadcrumbs. These are unseasoned. I just like to keep them unseasoned and then put whatever I want in them. But if you have seasoned, I'm sure it's fine. I'm using about an eighth of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. I'm using a tablespoon of lemon pepper seasoning. And this is really good. I will link the website where I buy this. It's a guy locally. It's called The Lawman Rub Company. He has a lot of great rubs for the smoker. I'm gonna use a teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of paprika, and about a half a teaspoon of some dried parsley. Now we're just gonna incorporate all that together. I'm gonna try to get away with one egg. I might have to go back for another one. These are thin sliced chicken breast, but they're really big. Okie dokie, just gonna take the chicken breast and you wanna coat both sides really well in your egg. Then, it's slippery. <laughs> it's hard to get a hold of after that. Then you're gonna bring it over here to your panko, really press it down. I'm gonna go ahead and put some over on that side. Then I'm gonna flip it over and press it in even more. You really wanna get your coating on there, get all of that seasoning, because you know what? I didn't even salt and pepper this chicken. <laughs> I just forgot I might hit those two pieces with some salt and pepper. We are just hungry. While my oil is heating up in my skillet over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and get another one done up. I think one egg is gonna get me through. And I think this is a perfect amount of breadcrumbs. Could probably even get one more thin one if you needed to. I think my oil is nice and hot. Let's lay a chicken breast down. Oh yeah. I may not be able to fit all these in here at one time. Let's lay another big bad boy in here. Oh, it's smelling delicious. Our chicken is looking and smelling beautiful and this should just take about four minutes on each side. You just wanna make sure it's an internal temperature of 165 degrees. Let's go ahead and give our first piece a little flip. Oh, that looks good. I actually saw this recipe on Instagram and I forgot the name of the girl, <laughs> but she's not a food channel. She has a YouTube channel, it's called The Small Things, and she's more of like a hair and makeup beauty person. But on Instagram, everybody shows everything. And she was making this for her family and it looked delicious. I mean, look how delicious it looks. And it sounded wonderful. So I was just copied that recipe down and I'll leave her Instagram and YouTube links below for you. You might enjoy her channel as well. This chicken is absolutely delicious. Lemon pepper is something that I always thought of just using in grilling or bacon, but I've never fried chicken coated with a crunchy coating and lemon pepper. This was so bright and delicious. You have to try it. It is so juicy. I just wanted to show you how pretty it fried up and it was so, so good, especially it being a thin 
breast, it was done in absolutely no time. This is a perfect meal for a night where you don't have much time, but you want something home style. Now we're going to give the Swaggerty Sausage Patty Melt a try. I've been dying to make this recipe since I saw it on their Instagram. We're going to start just making a little sauce here, and I'm using about a third a cup of mayonnaise, one tablespoon of ketchup, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and one tablespoon of a pepper jelly. I'm using a pineapple red pepper jelly from Kroger's. Just going to give that a mix and then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator while I assemble the rest of the patty. I'm just taking a sweet Vidalia onion and cutting it up in very thin slices. I probably just used about a quarter of that onion and then I'm heating some olive oil up in a skillet. I'm going to toss those onion slices up in there and let them get nice and caramelized. That's just going to take a couple minutes as well. If you are enjoying this 30 minute meal video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I'll know to make more of these for you. I have me a pound of Swaggerty's, just regular mild sausage. That is my favorite. And I'm cutting it up into fourths and you'll use one fourth for each of your patty melts. And you're just gonna wanna press each patty out nice and thin, about the same size as your bread. And I am gonna fry this up in the same skillet where I sauteed my onions, and it does not take but a minute. Flip that bad boy down in that warm, hot skillet, and it is gonna start sizzling and smelling delicious. Flip it over again, and it just takes another couple minutes, and that puppy is done. We were eating dinner really late this night, or I should say, I was eating dinner really late this night. Patrick did not get in until even after this, and he had already had some fast food, but I was bound and determined I was making this tonight, so I just made it for me. And this was the biggest piece of bread I've ever seen in my life, so I just cut it in half, and I'm gonna lay down some of that sauce we made on the bottom half. Then I'm gonna come in with a little white cheddar shredded cheese that I had in the refrigerator. I'm gonna bring that patty over and lay it on top of that white cheddar. And now we're gonna bring in all those yummy sauteed onions. Then we're gonna lay down some Swiss cheese, but I had this Swiss and Gruyere blend of shredded cheese that I wanted to use. Feel free just to use a regular old Swiss cheese slice. Honestly, use whatever cheese you want. It's your patty melt. <laughs> but I was super tickled to use these up. I'm gonna hit the other side of my bread with a nice big bunch of that sauce. And then we're gonna to top it and we are gonna get this thing in the skillet and get it to melting. And I don't know how my sandwich got so thick, but those things just happen. Callie came home about this time and she got to watch me try to grill up this huge sandwich. We got a good laugh out of this, but it was so good. Of course, everything's cooked now. You're just grilling it up and browning it on each side and getting your cheese to melt in there. And this, this is so good. It is such a pretty sandwich and it cooks up so nice. That sauce gets kind of melted down in there into that cheese and it is just the best flavor. Just a whole new little take on just a classic diner kind of food and I love it. Wanted to go ahead and cut it in half so I could give you a little taste test. I'm trying to do better about that. Y'all want to see me taste the food? So I'm gonna give you your wish and I'll tell you again, this is delicious. If you don't try anything in this video, you've got to make this swaggerty sausage patty melt. Okay, look at this. Those onions, that sauce, all those cheeses. Oh. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> that is so delicious. That is so delicious. 
This is so good. Of course, I love the sauteed onions, but that sauce is so good. So very good. And the swaggerties, I would have just never thought about making a patty melt with the sausage. I always just go for like ground beef, but this is delicious. And a little bit of the pineapple red pepper jelly. I love that stuff. It's great in here. If I've got you all scared up now thinking you've missed some more good recipes, watch this video next and you'll be all caught up. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.